Well, awesome. I'm looking forward to this. After a little bit of rescheduling issues, we're finally here. So nice to finally meet you in person. Yeah, you too. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, for those who don't know you, can you do a quick little intro of yourself? Sure. So um, I'm Nicole Smith, and I'm a marketing leader. Um, I've been at a company called Tackle for about four years, and I'm about to start a new role. But yeah, just um, been in the B2B marketing space for a very long time. I also run the Atlanta chapter of Pavilion. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, based in Atlanta. Sweet. What's running that chapter like? I, I feel like I should join Pavilion. And yeah. now that I'm saying it on camera, right. yeah, like I probably have to. Have to. So yes. <laughs> you're going to get an yes. invite in your um, yes. email soon to get joined. <laughs> Um, it's been, so I actually started the Atlanta chapter back in 2019 mm -hmm. and then like ran it for about two and a half years Then I moved to Florida for a bit and then started mm -hmm. running it again recently with Jessica Garrett in mm -hmm. Atlanta. It has been one of like the best experiences I think That's of my career. Every, everyone says that about yeah. Pavilion. In terms of like who I've gotten to meet, networking, mm -hmm. I, one of my, I think like superpowers is connecting people yep. and through that. And that's allowed me to connect people at a greater scale. So whether it's someone like looking for a new role, mm -hmm. someone wanting to like meet someone in the community, mm -hmm. for, like whether it's a VC firm, but yep. like I've gotten to build all these connections. Mm -hmm. I think it's helped like propel my career and that's meet people awesome. that way. And yeah, it's just been one of those things that I've mm -hmm. gained so much from it. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's been more like valuable to me in those mm -hmm. sorts of ways. So when you started it, I guess yeah. how many local, uh, I guess chapter members or whatever the correct term is, did you have and where are you at now? There were literally zero. I was the first <laughs> member in Atlanta. <laughs> and Sam Jacobs, who mm -hmm. leads yeah. it overall, was like, do you want to lead this chapter? And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't think so, yeah. but you know, I'll <laughs> see who else like might want to join in Atlanta. And soon we had like 20 members. He said, Nicole, yeah. you're doing the job already. Yeah. Why don't we just make you chapter head? Mm -hmm. And you know, it grew to about two over 200 in the two and a half years. Um, Whoa. Now we have more than 300 <laughs> in Atlanta. Oh my God. Yeah. That's amazing. Good on you. Yeah. You know what you're doing. Yeah. So I'm curious, what do like the meetups kind of yeah. uh, look like? Uh, if you're a local member, yeah. like, what are you doing in Atlanta? We do a ton. So each month we have an all chapter happy hour that mm -hmm. anyone can come attend. We do these executive saloon dinners, we call them. Saloon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love the naming. <laughs> yes. And they're limited to 20 executives. And we try and make sure that like the same people are coming to them. So mm -hmm. if you haven't attended one before, we want to yep. get you into those. Like um, in a few weeks, we're doing a mm -hmm. panel, a fireside chat and happy hour mm -hmm. um, for marketing leaders around mm -hmm. AI and what it means because we figured out that most people actually don't know what that means. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> um, so we've got like some data scientists, mm -hmm. people who are really that like doing awesome. all this cool stuff in it around yeah. the Atlanta area coming to talk to um, our CMOs and VPs mm -hmm. of marketing around what that means. So we're probably doing about four events a month, honestly, for Whoa. people to come to. Yeah. Like, so you're pretty lot. busy then. Yeah. I don't really know how to slow down. <laughs> Um, so by the time that this airs, you'll yeah. have made some uh, exciting, or I guess announced yeah, some exciting news. I so will. can you share a little bit more about what sure. you have on the table? Yeah. So I'm about to go join a company called Stay AI as mm -hmm. their CMO in mid-May. And I'm really excited about that. That's amazing. So how did you land on the opportunity? What, what was that process like? Yes. So when I decided I was going to be like um, leaving Tackle, I had an amazing four years mm -hmm. there. Um, I, you know, started putting out feelers to my network. Again, yep. like a lot of people I've met through Pavilion well, and was, other yeah, communities. Seriously. And my CEO from Tackle also mm -hmm. introduced me to like, you know, he was like, you should talk to these people in different VC firms that mm -hmm. we've been connected to, Bessemer, A16Z. Yep. And within about a week, I think I had 30 calls from different like top tier <laughs> recruiting firms, yeah. all these VC firms. Um, it was actually someone through Pavilion and mm -hmm. CMO Coffee Club. His name's James Winter. Yes, um, I know James. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is totally unplanned. James like helped me a lot on no my way. search too. Yes, yes. Shout out James. Yes, yes. We, James, we love yes. you. Um, <laughs> and so when James found that mm -hmm. out, um, he works for Telescope yep. um, Venture Partners, yeah. and he's like helping with all their portfolio companies yep. with their marketing. He's yep. like. Yeah, why don't I put you in touch with one of our partners here? Who did you talk to? Um, Amit. Yes, Have I talked talk to, yes, to him. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And yes. So, this is wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we did about an hour long call and he said, yeah. I think I have a portfolio company that would be mm -hmm. really interesting for you. He put me in touch with Stay mm -hmm. and that's, that's how I started wild. the process with them. So this is so funny. Um, I thought his interview style mm -hmm. was wildly different and yes. so cool. And I didn't really understand the types of questions yes. that he was asking me. And then I reflected on it afterwards and I was like, this is amazing. And I told James like the same yes. thing. Um, yeah. He, did he go through all like your history yes. basically yes. from when you were a child yes. to and how that is? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
when I was like, why, why is he asking these things? Yeah. And then afterwards I was like, everyone should interview like this. This it is was amazing. So, it was so, and then I was like, wait, did I do okay in yeah. that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Yeah, because I thought I bombed too. And then yeah. afterwards he's like, oh, he loved you. I was like, all right, well, good to know. <laughs> <That's> the same. <laughs> what a small world. That, that is, is crazy. So that's how I found that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, Stay AI helps subscription companies mm -hmm. um, in the Shopify e-commerce space mm -hmm. with their subscriptions. So they're helping them make sure they're like, you're retaining your customers. Mm -hmm. They're not churning. They have a really, really amazing product. And mm -hmm. they are just like, pumping out these amazing features, awesome. um, especially like powered by AI yep. is what they're doing. And so it's like a world that I'm really not familiar with. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about that a yeah. little bit beforehand. Are you nervous at all? I'm sure it's excitement with a little bit of nervousness. It, a little bit of nervousness. Um, but you know, when I went to Tackle, they were yep. all about cloud marketplaces. Yep. I had not heard of cloud marketplaces. Yep. I was like, I don't know what this means to mm -hmm. like go sell your software through AWS. And that's yeah. kind of how I feel about going to stay is, yeah. Wow, I'm going to learn a whole new ecosystem. Yep. So this is really exciting to me. And when I figured out, you know, what they were doing and like the opportunity there, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this is just fresh for amazing marketing. Yeah. And you know, my brain just already started like churning with ideas. So I'm excited. So I, a while ago, got my start in consulting, mm -hmm. and I kind of had a similar feeling every time I joined a new project, which yeah. was you do not know this industry at all. It's really <laughs> scary. It's like, I, I don't know anything here. Yeah. Uh, so I can definitely relate to that because it is exciting. And you really surprise yourself how quickly I think you learn and pick up, yes. uh, you know, a new industry that you have no prior experience in. So that's really cool. Yeah. Really. Uh, so now that you're in a new role or mm -hmm. will be in a new role, maybe we'll play a little bit more off yeah. of tackle. So I'm going to let you get on your soapbox here a little bit. What do you not like about buying software? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've got time. Yeah. Yes. So much. Um, I think how complicated it has to be sometimes because, you know, I know I don't even know what like the stat is mm -hmm. anymore of the numbers, whatever it is, like 80%, 75% mm -hmm. of your research is done before it you It keeps going it. up like yeah, every year. Yes. It really does. So maybe it's 95% yeah. now, but before I go to a vendor, mm -hmm. I've asked in all my communities, yep. you know, I've done my research, I've shortlisted it, my team has shortlisted it, mm -hmm. um, but it's still, like, I go in with the questions I wanna mm -hmm. ask. I might have even, like, seen uh, mm -hmm. some sort of demo online, yep. things like that, and I wanna go in and, like, mm -hmm. get, like, almost like my RFP is pretty much done. I wanna yep. make sure you can address these things, yep. but they, there's so many companies, and I'm not saying, like, we did a better job at this mm -hmm. or anything, but, like, Oh, you got to talk to the SDR for 30 minutes. Then you're going to go through the same sort of discovery with the AE. Didn't I tell you the same answers? Like, yes. yes <laughs> like, and almost like they have to check all their boxes. Yeah. And they could close the deal a lot faster and yeah. skip a lot of this if they just actually like yep. asked me in the first call, like, what do you know? Mm -hmm. What do you need from us to like make this decision happen? Yep. And some companies that have done that, mm -hmm. I'm going to actually make, probably work with you and make that happen a lot faster. So you mentioned some of the questions that kind of that you have in your head or your yeah. framework. Can mm -hmm. you kind of walk me through what some of those things are yeah. that you're looking into? Some of these are probably going to be um, around the lines of like on the budgeting side. Because like, yep. you know, especially if like you're buying a software, like a bigger solution, you know, I'm going to I'm thinking of something like an ABM tool right now. Yep. Um, you're not going to be able to find that pricing online. And even if you ask in communities, like yeah. every, it's going to vary a lot in a lot of different yeah. ways. So like, I want to really like understand that first and foremost is mm -hmm. like, will this fit in my budget? Like, mm -hmm. what are your contract terms going to be? Mm -hmm. And sales reps are so like hesitant to give you any sort of pricing right yeah. away on a first initial call. So I think things like that are going to be important to me. And then um, understanding maybe some of the components of the package as mm -hmm. well um, and what's included versus what's not and how I might be able to get all those things mm -hmm. right away too. Like I probably know your software is awesome or I might have even used it before. Just yeah. Freaking give me the, <laughs> give me the contract already. On yes, this. seriously. So you mentioned communities and kind of your mm -hmm. network. Are you asking uh, the same types of questions to those people too? I am, yeah. Um, and I'll also go through those communities and just like do a vendor search on this. I do that all the yeah. time. And I'm like, I want to, and if someone I see like, it's like, oh, I've had this terrible experience with a vendor. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to like probably message them and be like, are you willing to chat and talk? And I might actually mm -hmm. disqualify a vendor sometimes yeah. before that because of it. Like, I won't say who the vendor is, but there's, you yeah. know, in one of my CMO Coffee Talk community, yep. which is awesome, Matt Hines and Latney run yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of bashing about one vendor in there really? um, I, on a, you know, um, contact side that a lot of people use. Uh, for I think I'm going to look in Slack afterwards because I am in that uh, Slack yeah. channel. <laughs> um, and it, like horrible contracts, like things they've done to customers. Oh, yes, and yes. yes. And 
We're taking the high road. We're not naming well, names. Yes. yes. No, but, you know, it's, it's things like that that yeah. make you be like, oh, and then people are sharing great things about alternatives they found from mm -hmm. there. And it almost makes you say, like, if you're in a really tight situation where you've got to evaluate a vendor really quickly and mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of time, you might just be like, I'm not going to go down this road this time. I'm just going to go look yeah. at these alternatives then. Yeah. And I feel like so many people start their searches doing that sort of activity yes. too. Uh -huh. And, you know, years ago, the vendors had all of the information and you couldn't oh, yeah. really get any of that unless you talk to them. So yeah. it's kind of crazy to it see is. where people start now versus where they started years ago. Exactly. So one of the things that we're starting to lean into mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our messaging, sorry, Tim Davidson is showing up on a scooter right now. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> yes. Uh, so get it back on the rails, Mark. Uh, for our positioning and messaging, we're really trying to kind of elevate our narrative and, and how we talk about user evidence. So when you hear the term customer evidence, mm -hmm. what are the first few things that come to mind? Yeah, I think like about customer proof. Um, what are your customers saying about you? Um, probably those two things. Mm -hmm. So for us, we think of the easy parts of you know case studies and testimonials, mm -hmm. but what we're really trying to focus more on is uh, like anything around product usage and stats, okay. ROI yeah. data, uh, competitive intelligence, yeah. uh, and all sorts of things that hold a lot of weight that are a little bit more advanced than mm -hmm. case studies and testimonials. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe it was at Tackle. What was that process like to create customer evidence? So, you know, it in the early days, I think it was super easy. Mm -hmm. um, we had customers like banging down our door. That Good problem like, to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, we want to give you case studies mm -hmm. and testimonials. And it still is like uh, not too hard of a process, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, are very lucky that I think like, you know, especially like around doing events and things yep. like that. Um, we'll have customers that are like, I want to speak on this. Why didn't you let me speak? And I think that's that also a great. That is a first world marketing problem. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, where they then like, I think that's a great way to capture that, mm -hmm. that information. I think what is hard, yep. you know, I think about like the product usage and yep. like telling those stories is that that becomes really hesitant in a lot of ways for customers to mm -hmm. share some of that out yep. in the wild and especially when you're in a market where like okay we we worked with a lot of companies at tackle that mm -hmm. were like they were all in the security space yep. so like we're working with wiz yep. and a crowd strike yep. and they're a little competitive to each other and yeah, so like, yeah, yeah well i don't want to share this data i don't want them to see how i'm doing here and mm -hmm. how many you know how much revenue i'm driving yep. through the cloud marketplaces with tackle mm -hmm. i can only say this or that yeah. and that but that's great things that we want to be able to share and them mm -hmm. to share those nuggets too. So I think yeah. that's where we started running into blockers as yep. we were growing yeah. a lot. So I promise I'm not pitching you, but the yeah, funny yeah. part is cyber is like one of our best industries okay. because yeah. we can protect their identity mm -hmm. and still verify it yeah. that, you know, it's a CRO at a cybersecurity company yep. or something. So there's still some validity mm -hmm. to it, but a lot of those companies don't want to share, you know, that right. they got hacked and your product, you know, exactly. save them yeah. uh, because it looks bad on their part. So mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. So last question for you, kind of a broad one. It's been interesting to get everyone's answer to this. How do you go about building trust in your marketing? That's a really good one um, question. I think it can be really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I would say there I thought, has... I thought you were just going to stop. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Just, that's it. Good luck. Good luck to everyone out there. Yes. <laughs> um, I think it really goes along. You have to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that really starts a lot with like how you build the brand, I mm -hmm. would say. And I think like I would really like Tackle did that really well in mm -hmm. our early days. Like we were a lot of our executives were really big on like, you know, just building that brand on LinkedIn. Yep. We did something um, each week. Like I started in um, January of 2020 and that mm -hmm. was like right oh, when the Oh, what happened a couple months yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we were like, oh, we're yes. not going to get to meet people in person. Yeah. We just decided to start this um, weekly office hour session mm -hmm. and we would just invite customers, like late stage prospects yep. on. A lot of them didn't have agendas. We were just like, what do you want to talk about? What questions That's do you all, have for I'm going to steal that or borrow that. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's marketing. Steal. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and... People, I just realized like how much trust that built in us because we were just willing to really answer whatever, yeah. whatever questions they had. Then we started like, oh, do y'all want to talk about this this week? Who mm -hmm. wants to? And started Google Forms around mm -hmm. it. It was the scrappiest sort yeah, of marketing yeah, yeah. effort. But again, I think just sharing a lot of what you're building, if yep. you do that in public, being willing to do things like that, that, that builds trust, not hiding behind walls, mm -hmm. not putting out, you know, content that's 
really not, that doesn't sound authentic yep. or is, you know, overly curated. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you do a great job of that, by the way. That's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. This was a blast. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm crazy or not. Did we have any of those noises or no? We did. I think it happened right before we started. Okay. So, we got so this really was the first interview this. that we had where there wasn't like the crazy oh, noise in the background. Is, so yeah, yes, this is really special. This was then. awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun.